You're about to see one player spend over $92,000 on a mobile strategy game. For those of you unaware, gems are a common currency found in mobile games that typically can only be obtained in bulk with real money purchases. The subject of today's video is a mobile game called Rise of Kingdoms, where you're going to see one player spend over 22 million of these premium gems. So you might be thinking, how much is a single gem worth? Well, we can take a look in the shop here and it says 25,000 gems is 100 US dollars. However, most players know that getting your gems from bundles provides more value. So the important thing to know is that one full bundle purchase is $385, which provides the player 94,850 gems. And in just under six minutes, this player Burnaby was able to spend 22,840,665 gems in total. This means the total value of the gems that he spent in just six minutes is equivalent to 92,400 US dollars. Now, later we're going to talk about whether or not this should even be allowed in gaming, period. But for now, let's focus on what exactly this player is doing. And if you pay attention closely, you'll see that he's spending these gems to create troops. You see, Rise of Kingdoms is a war game. It's a game where players fight against other players using their commanders and their troop power. So naturally, the more troops that you have, the more war you can wage. This player is instantly training some of the most powerful units in the entire game in battle of over 20,000. Normally training this many troops a single time would take about 15 days, but by spending gems, this player is able to get years worth of troops in just a couple of minutes. So when it's all said and done, all of these digital troops are worth over $92,000. And I keep saying that number and I feel like most people just can't really get their head around how much that actually is. I mean, your average person makes what, 10, $15 an hour? When you throw around a number like 92,000 or $100,000, it's just, it's so much money that most people just don't really grasp what they can do with that. So let me put that in another way. $92,400 is enough money to buy 115 iPhone 12s. It's also enough money to feed an entire small town McDonald's. You could buy 20,533 Big Macs with $92,400. That's about 1,358 pounds of just food fat from Big Macs or about two of your mother. But let's be real. People aren't going around spending all this money on Big Macs or phones. What you would normally do with this much money is buy something like a car, for example. So what's the best car you could get for that amount of money? Well, you could get a 2022 BMW 8 Series for $86,000. That's right. It would actually be cheaper to buy the brand new BMW 8 Series than it would be to replicate what you're seeing here in this video. Tesla's famous Cybertruck hasn't even come out yet and it starts at $39,900. You could literally buy two Tesla Cybertrucks for less money than what you're seeing this player do in just six minutes. Perhaps what's even more impressive is that this amount of money can actually make some real world change. Here we're looking at a charity called Feeding America where they go on to explain how just $1 can make 10 meals for people in need. So $92,400 is almost a million of these meals. Now I'll have a link in the description below if you want to donate towards this cause, but the point of this video isn't to make anybody feel bad about their mobile game purchases. After all, I don't know anything about this player, so he could be donating to charities and making a world of difference difference without me even knowing. But the point of this video is to just ask, is this too much? Have we gone too far? Should this even be allowed in mobile games? How far should pay to win go? I mean, this level of spending creates an unfair environment for all the other players around him, right? Even those players who spend $5,000 in the game could easily be defeated by this single player alone. And $5,000 for many people is still way more than what they would expect a normal person to spend on a mobile game. To think that you'd be at such a huge disadvantage after spending so much money is crazy. Back in the day, you would spend a couple of dollars on a Pong cartridge and you would just have two sticks shooting a single pixel back and forth across your television. And now you have games like this on your phone where a single player's account can be worth over a million dollars. It's crazy how fast the gaming landscape has changed. And again, this money could be spent doing better things. And if spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a game 
game is possible, then it gives the developers an incentive to build their games around mechanics that favor that activity. A strategy game 15 years ago was just based on skill and game knowledge, but now for some games, money is the biggest factor. But I can see the argument from the other side as well, right? This player isn't doing anything illegal. It's a free country. You could spend your money on literally whatever you want. So as long as he's well within the law, then who really cares, right? It's his money. If this is what the players enjoy, then let them decide how much money their entertainment is worth. Huge fans of these types of games will go as far as to say that he deserves to have a massive advantage because look how much money he's spending. Many players find that completely fair to use your own money to give you an advantage. Now everybody who's seen my content before knows that I do spend money in Rise of Kingdoms, but I'd still rather games just not be like this. Personally, I'd rather see the guy at the top of the leaderboard be the person who spent the most amount of time and energy and effort into the game, not just money. And yes, that would mean that I'm implying you should work hard to be good at a game, and a lot of players don't really like to associate work with fun, but I'd argue that the reward structure built into our brains favors the progression of working towards a specific goal. Working hard for something gives you a sense of accomplishment, whether it's playing a video game or handcrafting your own table. Just because something seems like work doesn't mean it can't be enjoyable too. Now of course, game development companies are businesses, so there's gonna have to be some sort of middle ground here that we can meet, and some players suggest that maybe in-game purchase items should be cosmetic only and have no effect on gameplay at all. Which for some games I think is definitely a solid solution, but I still think that has some flaws. Even if an item or costume in a game is just cosmetic by nature, there's still a certain amount of social status involved with cosmetic items. I mean, why does anyone buy a Gucci belt? It doesn't perform any better than a regular belt, at least not relative to its cost to a regular belt, but people still buy it because of the brand, for the status, for other people to notice. So if all the coolest looking characters in a game are people who just paid to look that cool? I don't know. I just think there's an opportunity there. What if instead of paying for that cosmetic item, the developer put it behind a really awesome quest? Or maybe a list of missions that tell the player a really awesome story about the game? Again, this would just be something for new players to work towards. If you're playing an RPG and the number one guy on the leaderboard has a really cool dragon helmet, you'd be way more impressed if you found out he had to kill 50,000 players just to get that, rather than him just spending $50. So again, cosmetic items are definitely better, but I still think there's some flaws. But gaming's been focused on microtransactions for a while now, so the real question is, is it too late to go back? I guess it really all comes down to perspective. But I would love to hear what you guys have to think in the comments section below. Do you think this outrageous level of spending should be at least limited to some extent in these mobile games? Hopefully if you guys made it all the way to the end of this video, you'll drop a thumbs up on it because it really does help out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm. Of course, if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kings video. And huge shout out to this random subscriber. Guys, if you want this to be a brand new thing here on the channel where I shout one of you guys out every single video, make sure you drop a sub down below and that's how I'll know that this is something that you guys want to see. As always, my social media links are in the description below, so make sure you follow me over there on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Discord. All that stuff is always down below, as well as a link to download Rise of Kingdoms for your PC, it's a program called Blue Stacks, and it's my favorite way to play Rise of Kingdoms. Of course, if you're going to spend $92,000, make sure you join my alliance first before doing so. But seriously, don't spend that much money. I'd rather see you donate it to Feeding America. Again, link down below. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been OmniArch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.